In what feels like a movie, but is in fact real life, NASA's first planetary defense test, the DART mission, is officially an enormous success. By deliberately smashing a 600 kilogram spacecraft into the dimorphous asteroid, we have successfully slowed down its orbit around a larger asteroid by an impressive 32 minutes. That is a huge change and way above the margin that would have classed this mission as a success. So let's take a closer look at why this was so successful and how we measured the change. In November 2021, DART launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and spent 10 months traveling the millions of miles to reach the dimorphous Didymus double asteroid system, where on September 26th, 2022, it deliberately crashed into the smaller of the two asteroids, Dimorphus. This was a test to see if we could deflect a similar asteroid if it was ever on course to hit Earth and we needed to defend ourselves. I have a couple of videos on the DART mission that go into way more detail about the mission itself and why we chose this asteroid in particular for the test. So check those out if you're interested in more. I'll link them in the description and in the top right corner now. It was hoped that this kinetic impact event would slow down the asteroid's orbit around the larger Didymus by about 10 minutes, but anything above 72 seconds would have been considered a success. With that said, we now have confirmation that the orbital period has decreased from 11 hours and 55 minutes to 11 hours and 23 minutes, meaning this mission was officially a huge success, even given the plus or minus two minute error bars on this observation. This is an amazing result and means the orbital period has reduced by about 4%, and Dimorphos is now tens of meters closer to its parent asteroid Didymus. The impact took place about 7 million miles from Earth, and the spacecraft, which was about the size of a refrigerator, was traveling at about 14,000 miles an hour at the time of the impact. The change in orbital time has been measured by at least four telescopes on Earth, and they all agree with each other and the independent DART teams that check the results amazingly. The way they measured the orbit is by studying the brightness of the asteroids over time. You see, these optical telescopes on Earth can't resolve the tiny Dimorphos as a separate object from Didymus. They just see the whole system as a speck of light. Whenever Dimorphos passes in front of Didymus, the brightness that the telescopes are seeing decreases because there's less surface area to reflect sunlight back at us. Similarly, when it passes behind, we also get a dip, albeit a slightly smaller dip. By simply counting the time in between the dips, we can get the orbital period of Dimorphos, and we've definitely seen it decrease by 32 minutes. We expected these observations to take a long time to complete, but after just two weeks, all of the teams involved are very confident in the reduction. Incidentally, this was all done by ground-based telescopes, and not space-based ones like JWST or Hubble simply because it took two weeks of observing all night, every night. And that's just too much time to use one of these valuable space-based resources to look at the asteroids. This actually wasn't the first time these observations were done either. We had to do them before the impact, so we knew the orbital period before impact. And they also had to be done so we could work out where in the orbit Dimorphos was, so that when we went to impact it, it would be where we were expecting it to be. As well as visible light telescopes, planetary radar has also been used to watch the orbit. These actually have enough resolution to get separate signals from both asteroids, so we can watch the orbit directly, and we see that it's now consistent with 11 hours and 23 minutes, and no longer consistent with the longer 11 hours and 55 minutes. I guess the question now becomes, why was it so successful? Other than the huge amount of energy transferred by the impact in the opposite direction to the motion of Dimorphos, the answer seems to be the huge amount of ejector that we saw after the impact. In fact, we're still seeing it. For example, in this image by Hubble, the huge tail we can see is particles and rocks being thrown off the asteroid, likely funneled into shape by solar radiation pressure. And this tail is now about 10,000 kilometers long. We've basically turned the asteroid into a comet. Interestingly, we can also see the tail sort of splitting in two in this Hubble image, and we don't yet know why this is, but further observations and modeling will be done to try and figure that out. The large amount of ejector we've seen does two things. Firstly, it reduces the mass of the asteroid a little, but more importantly, it provides a way of losing momentum. As the ejector is blown off, it sort of pushes against the asteroid and slows it down. Because of this and the continual nature of the ejector, I'd expect the orbital period of Dimorphos to keep decreasing over time. If it does, this is something we'll be able to see too. 
The impact was timed to take place when the asteroid system was relatively close to Earth. And this means that as it carries on orbiting the Sun, we'll be able to observe it well into 2023, studying the evolution of the ejector and any more changes in the orbits. Unofficially, some of the DART team said they were actually expecting the large amount of ejector to cause a big change in the orbit. When they saw the close-ups of the asteroid and saw no craters and lots of loose looking rocks, they got excited. We also got some new footage from Lichia Cube, the Italian space agency run CubeSat that hitched a ride so that it could get some close-up shots of the impact. It used artificial intelligence to teach itself how to follow DART and then took footage while traveling at 6.6 kilometers per second and having to turn around halfway through the flyby, which is all very impressive. It also got within 59 kilometers of the asteroid, which is pretty close, and it caught this cool footage of the impact. Dart teams have then taken one of the images of the Chia Cube and enhanced the level of detail we can see. Enhanced. with each rectangle representing another increase in resolution by a factor of two. This provides an incredible view of the details and structures in the streamers coming off Dimorphos. These are acting like windows into science, windows into trying to understand the solar system and the universe and how to defend the planet. Although for me at least, they definitely provide more questions than answers about all of the intricate structure and the shapes we're seeing here. So given all of this, I guess the next question is could a dart-like spacecraft actually be used to save the Earth from a large asteroid impact if we needed to? The answer is probably if we had enough warning. By that, I probably mean decades of warning. This is feasible for spotting something big enough to threaten the whole Earth, but it's not guaranteed, of course. If we had decades, we would probably send a reconnaissance mission to look at the asteroid and determine the exact size and composition of it. You see, if it's rubbly and loosely bound together like Dimorphos looks to be, then it would probably be affected in a similar way with a similar amount of ejector. If it was a solid rock though, it might move less as it would be likely to eject less of a plume. All asteroids are different. And for this sort of thing, it seems like the composition is incredibly important. Of course, there are still many open questions and work to do to completely understand this impact. The DART teams are still working hard to understand things like the shape of the ejector cone, the size and exact direction of all the particles ejected, what the change in mass of the asteroid is, and did it change in density? Is the new orbit elliptical or circular? And is the asteroid now wobbling at all? And will this affect the orbital motion in the future? Even questions like, is it harder to hit a lone asteroid rather than one in a regular orbit like Dimorphos will be considered. They'll also continue running simulations to try and replicate what we saw perfectly and try to predict what ESA's HERA mission might see when it visits the system in 2027. There are also plans to complete an inventory of all the potential threats in the solar system, which would be essential if we want lots of warning of a potential threat. All in all, we've successfully moved a planetary body in a measurable way for the very first time. And it's an asteroid that is definitely in the size range that we're interested in as one that is potentially dangerous. Next up, we should try it again on a different asteroid to see if it works on one with a different composition. For example, one that is a solid rock. Let me know in the comments below what you think of all of this and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon, bye.